and we will, we will do a um, tour of the Guadalupe River Community Garden. Yes. Um, you guys must get pretty used to that with all the planes and everything going over. And yes. <laughs> a lot of times I have like uh, earplug earphone headphones that I'll I'll plug those in to listen to music more quietly. Cool. And it kind of cuts down on the urban noise. camera you gotta <laughs> so okay Rebecca why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself okay and, uh, take us on a tour of this wonderful garden thank you for coming today uh, this is the Guadalupe Community Garden managed by the city of San Jose um, I am Rebecca Schoenberger I'm also a master gardener and um, pardon all the urban noise you may hear airplanes go by you may hear um, a loud car just went by so if a uh, airplane goes by we might just stop talking and so uh, just be prepared for that we didn't lose signal we're just waiting for the p plane to pass and then we'll resume talking once the plane noise is passed and the community garden here all throughout in the entire city of san jose there are community gardens and uh, I would encourage everybody to look up the local community garden that's by you and you can anybody who's a resident in the city of San Jose can apply to have a plot. There's a minimal fee for the plot and the fee covers the water it costs for irrigation. Here at this park at Guadalupe, we're lucky enough to be on recycled water. So the water here is much cheaper than at some of the other plots. So I originally tried to get to the Willow Glen Community Garden and once a plot finally opened up, I, I was given the option to go with Willow Glen or go with Guadalupe. And when I learned about the recycling water, I went with that because it was cheaper and because it's just better for the environment to use uh, recycled water. So that also brings us to the point of we don't feel so guilty when we water here because it's not just fresh water that's coming from our aquifers or our reservoirs. So it's a kind of a better feel good way about watering here. So if you look around, you can see all these community plots. We have some bigger plots and then we have some smaller and narrower plots. I originally started with one of the narrow plots. Plane coming. And once you've been here um, for a while, if somebody leaves a plot, you'll get the option to upgrade to a larger plot. So um, when that option came around for me, I took it after, after I got used to gardening in the smaller plot for a couple of years, then I upgraded to a larger plot. And this one on the corner is mine. And so I like to mix a lot of veggies and flowers. I like to create a lot of habitat and uh, I find that I get a happier garden that way because I am bringing lots of bees and pollinators around my garden. And it's just pretty. I like to have the mix of things rather than just veggies or just tomatoes. It's, it works if your primary goal is food, but um, I feel like you get better production when you mix it all up together. And so the other part of this garden is the perimeter garden. I've kind of taken on that as my little pet project the last couple of years and a while ago I realized that if I just start watering things stay flowering longer and it was just a matter of like taking more time to go water on these perimeter edges and when the um, I'm also a landscaper by profession so when I get orphan plants that we're ripping out of somebody's yard or somebody gives me a free plant because they know I'm a landscaper. I'll repurpose those plants and I've actually planted a lot of things around the perimeter that people donate to me or we rip out and I just can't stand to throw them away. 
so you can see a lot of these on the perimeter here. Um, we can take a walk around and maybe get more in the sun. This ground cover here is called uh, Lipia, or it's now had a name change to Phyla, not a Flora. It's an amazing ground cover. Um, this whole section and actually going out beyond the gate is grown from one four inch plant. One plant? Yeah, and it's spread, now it's spread about 20 feet around. Yeah, so, and it's ideal that we've got these plants to spread and then they compete so there's less weeds because we have these plants taking up the space. And then I don't know how close you can get with the camera, but there's little tiny flowers on them that the bees love. So yeah, these little itty bitty thimble like flowers, the, once the sun comes up more, this will just be carpet covered in bees. And it's totally steppable. We can drive on it, we can walk on it. The Master Gardeners have a plot here too, so I can show you that as well. Plain. Uh, the Master Gardeners added a couple of signs here this last spring. So we've got some interpretive signs. This one's about soil quality and health. Here you can see more of the flowers on this patch of the phyla. See all the little white and there's little skippers out there. Uh, this little salvia is blooming almost all the time, more in the summer to the fall. And so this is a hummingbird delight. This is a, there's hundreds of types of salvia. This is one called a little leaf salvia because it gets a tiny leaf. But this is one of, there's several things that they call Mexican sage, but this is a sage from Mexico, yes. And then aloes, that's one of the plants that got orphaned or it got donated to me. These came from my mom and other succulent gardeners that are, you know, once you start gardening, you, you get babies. So sometimes you got to thin things and that's good for me because then I get extra plants. We still have California poppies in bloom. And of course, you know, like I mentioned, this garden has recycled water. So we're watering these areas to keep them green and keep them flowering longer. And, and in turn, that keeps the pollinators constantly around our gardens. I am uh, by passion and profession a native plant gardener, so we do try to introduce a lot of natives. And in some ways, I kind of think of this garden as like my test garden that I try things and I see how it works because a lot of times I'm only coming here like once a week. So it's got to be able to survive the full sun that we have here and not getting watered often. So it's got to be really hardy plants as well. This is a type of lavender. So it needs deadheading, but there's lots of little flowers that just continue to bloom. So hummingbirds and bees love this. This is a type of pelargonium and it's just uh, like an ivy geranium and just low and spreading. Anything that spreads is good for taking up space and competing with the weeds. This is a, um, this is a four o'clock. If you've ever heard of the flowers, four o'clock, um, they drop their, all their seed balls are right here, ready to drop. So these will drop in the vicinity and then those will be ne next year's flowers. So that's another thing we do is like we, is things that reseed on their own are usually pretty hardy and don't need a lot of attention. So the four o'clocks, there's a lot of patches of those that once they get going, it's kind of hard to stop them. This is a funky native. This is called bladder pod and it's called bladder pod. Let's find a pod. Uh, there's gotta be one around here somewhere. Okay, there's one. 
So the pod, when it dries, it's kind of, when it's green, it, this is it just dry and then normally it would be green, but they call it bladder pod because they say the pod kind of looks like a bladder. Um, some people say the plant smells like urine, but I think Ew. it's, I think it's like the smell <laughs> of the desert, you know, it's like oh, that. Okay. Uh, and so these plant, I'll take these seeds and I'll spread them around and oh. hopefully we get another baby coming. And some agave outside, some more aloe, another succulent. Probably everybody has this plant at home, the jade plant. Everybody and their mother's got a jade plant. So good for dealing with ferns. Well, I'm not sure about that. I think of that with aloe vera, but I'm not sure about with that one. I like, I like those ones because they're hard to kill. Yes, exactly. That's where succulents are really good for encouraging a lot of people into gardening because it gives you a chance to be successful with it. Whereas if you start gardening with tomatoes or for peppers, you know, it kind of takes a little bit of a uh, learning curve to get it, get it going right. So uh, this guy up here is a lavatera or a bush mallow. Um, more of a, like a Channel Islands native and let's see. There's, there's a very pretty flower, this magenta pink there, and they're flowering almost all the time. And let's see here. So we also, um, being that this is at the Guadalupe Corridor, uh, the Guadalupe River is right over there. This is a native walnut that was probably an original here or might have been during orchard time so um, there's several walnuts here and this one is a native elderberry this one was planted probably planted by the birds because it's right at the fence line and so I've let it grow and then I kind of have tried to train it so it's more of a nice structured tree and not coming it too much into the garden to cause shade or a mess for any of the gardeners. But all these berries, the birds are just loving and uh, this tree will just get covered with birds. They'll eat all this. Another little pelargonium. I like the pelargoniums because there's so many, or geraniums, there's so many varieties, so many different colored flowers, shapes. And this one's a different type of lavender. We have uh, several different kinds. This is probably, this plant was um, already existing. So a lot of these plants were probably like maybe a quarter of them were here and then maybe three quarters I've added. Most of this stuff was all existing. Another type of geranium, I think this one's a, a scented geranium. So a lot of the gardeners come and cut and harvest from some of our perimeter plants too. What does that mean, scented? Um, so sometimes um, it'll have a, a lot of pelargoniums have a certain type of smell. So some are like more nutmeg smell, some are more minty. Ooh. Yeah, so depending on what smell people like, they might just want to collect it for the fragrance. And sometimes they might have like other uses. I'm not 100% sure. Here's some native yarrow. This one, um, anything with a big flower top like that is great for pollinators because it gives them a lot of different places to land on and lots of little flowers. Plane coming. <laughs> and there's another sign you can check out. So this sign is about water efficiency and irrigation. And, you know, it talks about drip system. At the community garden, we're not allowed to have like irrigation systems set up. They want everybody to come and hand water. So that's uh, a little more inconvenient for some people, but I think it keeps you familiar with your garden. Um, and Terry and I were talking earlier. I, 
I think watering is kind of a peaceful activity. It kind of helps me calm down when I have a, a stressed out day. This is usually where I come is to the community garden to either water or weed or just trim some of the plants. Sometimes I just come to see what's in bloom and take pictures of all the flowers and that makes me feel better. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's, it's, good for, it's good for my heart and, and health wise because you get your hands in the soil and actually do some work, but just to be outside, even though it isn't right next to the airport and constantly under um, all this urban noise, it is very peaceful to be out here. More succulents that were donated. And succulents have become so trendy, so everybody loves them. We, ha we have occasionally had plant, um, we have had some plant vandalism. We have had some plant thefts because succulents are so popular. We had some plants on the outside of the fence and they walked away somehow. So that does happen occasionally. So that's why I try to put the the freebie plants on the outside. So if something does happen to them, I don't feel so personally hurt by it. The other thing that's really cool about being at a community garden is you get to see what other people are doing and you get to see foods and veggies from other cultures that you might not be exposed to. And I think this is a type of bitter melon, which Ooh. I had no idea how to eat a bitter melon or what to do to it. And I still don't, but it's just nice to see the diversity of different things that grow. And I'll show you some really cool melons over here. Bitter melon is supposed to be really good for um, blood sugar. Okay. So whoever's plot this is, is just does an amazing job. This is a goji berry. So a lot of people like the goji, um, a lot of high antioxidants, but it actually makes a really pretty flower. The flower starts off purple and then it fades to like tan. And then the, then the gojis come after that. Oh, they just harvested them. There were two big melons hanging down right here and you could see one behind there and one over here. So Whoa. isn't that amazing? That's humongous. And you would think like, how could that hold up? So every melon or pumpkin is strong enough to hold itself up. So a lot of people wow. will like this, people at this plot have started growing the, the gourds and melons vertically. For one, it gives you more space. And for two, the way they're growing them off these uh, trellises, the melon's not laying on the ground, so it's not gonna be exposed to other pests or critters that might try to eat it. So this is where it's really fun to see what other gardeners are doing and be like, that's a good idea. I'm gonna try that next year. And they got a taro plant here. So they got lots of plants that are not so common for our area. So this is taro grown for in Hawaii and the poi is used in a lot of Pacific cuisine. There's another one. Well, it looks like they're using cardboard to block the weeds. Probably to block the weeds, yes. And maybe they're trying to kill something. Usually you would put something on top of it, like a mulch. So they may just be using it, you're right, to just block the weeds for temporary. And then they've got eggplant and uh, I don't know what half of the other stuff is. So that's the fun, this one in the middle is okra. Um, some people either love it or hate it, but okra actually makes a beautiful flower like a hibiscus. Oh, wow. So it, uh, it's a really pretty plant. Oh, here's a, one up close. Well, you could see the okra part. So that would be the part that somebody would harvest and eat that po pod, or it's pretty big. this one. Are you looking at the leaf or this one? Oh, it's trying to give me the rotate. Okay. I'm like, sorry, it's the rotate too much. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and some butterfly bushes, again, things for the pollinators and just to keep flowers going. This is a, this is a sage from the Canary Islands 
and this sage will flower almost all the time too and it's huge and what's really cool about this one is the leaf is like toilet paper or, or like velvet like it'd be better it'd be a better than toilet paper alternative <laughs> if you were willing to pick through the plant And just on the other side of the gate, I added a red bud. So we're trying to add some more trees over time because everybody wants to park around for the shade. So everybody wants some shade. And so in the back here on this back row, we have um, a row of fruit trees. And so these are, because it's a community garden, we, we all can't have a tree in our plot. So we have some community trees. So the community takes care of these plants and then when they're ready for harvest, we, we all share them. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. This walnut grew here from seed. So that's a volunteer and I'm kind of training it to be more of a tree and we'll let that guy stay. We have an avocado on the corner that not too many people notice, but the ones that do know exactly where it is. <laughs> Here's another gardener that's kind of mixing a lot of flowers in with their veggies. So then they get a little more diversity and it just is pretty. It's colorful and nice. You getting hot? Oh, I'm just worried about the iPad. That's okay. okay. And we also have some ADA beds. So we have a few, uh, I think four or six ADA beds. Cool. So that makes it a little more accessible for somebody to work on. They might have limited uh, ability. And then we have a big compost pile that everybody throws their waste into and then the city ha has the garbage company come and they, that goes to green waste eventually. Oh, okay. uh, we do have some compost bins on site, but uh, yeah. And then we also, we get compost delivered and then all the gardeners use off of that one pile. Where are we at on time? Oh gosh, 10.55. You wanna to go towards the outside? Sure. Walk out the perimeter. Yes, they're like my tree. This is a really cool nectarine. It's actually like a green nectarine. Like uh, when it's ripe, it looks green. Uh, I think it's like an old Italian heirloom variety. It is. It's a huge plot. And we actually have a big field that the city uh, potentially will build more community garden plots. Uh, I think they're just waiting for funding. And I'll just show you this because it's on the way. Um, I did a job recently where we took out the space rock and it was going to go to the dump. And so rather than have the ma useful material get wasted, I brought it here and then we used it to create a path to our bee area. And I'll show you the bee garden real quick. Oops, this way. So we have our we have our own bees here and a couple of the gardeners here are really into bees so they are they take care of them but um, we've had two hives and so this hive just got moved off of that wooden thing over to this one and our garden manager started 
there's some pests that attack bees, so they put these bases with water in them so that pests won't be able to go and attack the bees. So it's kind of like an IPM thing that we're trying to help the bees from s predators that they may have. So that's our little bee garden. And then once we get this path finished, then we'll probably, we could fill the rest of this with flowers or even that lipia ground cover. So it'd be something that the bees can use and we can all walk on if we need to. Do you, uh, do you sell the honey? Uh, we do amongst the community garden. Okay. Yes, so community gardeners do get opportunity to buy this honey. Oh, and I don't, I don't think they charge very much for it. That's it's like cool. minimal. There's another perk. Yes, another perk of the community garden for sure. And now we'll go towards the big field. Uh, this is a herb bed because the, there's so a couple of the rules with the community garden is we're not supposed to grow trees and we're not supposed to grow certain herbs because some herbs can be very aggressive and will kind of take over. So we have a community herb bed too. So everybody can grow the herbs that they want here and not worry about them taking over your plot. And I think we have a red tail pear that lives in this tree, in this old eucalyptus. I've often seen a, a hawk, I catch him sometimes, or him or her in people's uh, bird baths. Oh. So he comes down and he takes a bath, or, um, or I'll see him get a squirrel or something, which we're like, hey, we need all the uh, pest management we can get. So we loved having the hawks. I just found a baby gopher here oh, wow. uh, like two weeks ago and I released him in the garden. So uh, we have our own natural pest predators. So this is what we call the big field. And the big field is where um, the city plans for this to be more plots, but um, the funding's not there yet. So one day, and in the meantime, everybody kind of just takes over a spot and they can grow whatever they want out here. And so last year it was a pumpkin patch. I tried growing pumpkins this year, but my pumpkins did terrible. So it's just trial and error. And then I've tried to fill uh, the perimeter with plants. So I've already kind of started what we're doing out here for when this ever does get finished. So somebody got a few pumpkins or gourds. Not me, but somebody did well. <laughs> uh, this is another, like everybody, once you start gardening, you start repurposing things. So these tires, somebody's using these tires to layer up and grow potatoes so that they can just knock the tire off. And then the potato, because potatoes you want to bury as you grow. So this is where you can just put a tire on top and keep filling it. Okay, so we'll just go out this gate and then walk up this little side area. Another butterfly bush, those are long blooming. And another bladder pod, you can see the pods green and dry. And just these flowers are just nonstop, they're amazing. Here's a white sage, which is actually really unique. You've got the dry stalk and then you've got it flowering again. And this plant is really cool. This is called Ancelia or brittle bush. And it is really brittle. Um, but all you do is just deadhead out the old flowers and then this just keeps going and going and this is an amazing plant because it I don't know if you can tell but this is really rocky soil a lot of these plants are almost just planted into like base rock and gravelly soil um, 
So for a lot of these plants to be doing well in such poor soil is another kind of uh, thing I use of like hardiness of can it stand this poor soil, full sun. You can see we're facing south. Downtown San Jose is right there. Let's get out the gate, it'll be easier. <laughs> then those bars won't be in your way. You won't feel like you're in jail. So we're on Taylor Street at Walnut and looking south is downtown San Jose. You can see the buildings. And then more to the left, you can see Mount Hamilton kind of off in the distance, a little hazy day, so it's not so clear. And then there's the Rose Garden in the Guadalupe Garden. And they're doing, gonna do some changes to those gardens over there. And then I slowly added and filled in this garden here. So again, you see the, the Lipia ground cover and all the bees on it. And so this makes it so much easier. Normally springtime, this would be like knee high, chest high weeds. So having this ground cover is gonna make it so like maybe only 10 will be able to grow through that. And then you could look down the sidewalk. So none of that used to be there except the trees. That's, and I basically have planted all of that. That's really cool. It's a little bit of an obsession, but like I said in the beginning, it's like, it's my fun place to just relax and focus on the garden instead of thinking about all the stressful things in life, right? I think it's good too, because you're also helping the people that have to drive by. Yes, I've had people just stop. I've seen people make a up and make a U-turn. And when the sunflowers were up, it was really a showstopper. People were just stopping and would come take pictures of the sunflowers. And it's been a, another fun thing is, you know, you have so many diversity of people in San Jose. And so Latino people have come by and commented about the agave and been like, oh, that's a good plant for medicine. So everybody sees plants differently, whether for food or for medicine or flowers. So that's been fun to see random people just engage with the garden just by seeing the flowers out here. This plant is interesting. This is called a uh, gum plant. There's a couple types of gum plant. This one's a little more upright. So you could see on the flower tip, it's all gummy and sticky. And then when it opens, it becomes this pretty flower. And then I could like spread seeds around by taking these seed heads and flicking and spreading them around. This plant came from my home garden. So some things you could like, like canna, you can just divide. And I'm like that could even be divided in half and be two more plants now. So it's kind of like knowing the plants that will give you more plants. Oh, there's somebody. A little possum or something. Yes. <laughs> uh, this is a white Ceanothus. And I planted this guy. It's probably one of the older plants out here. And so it's kind of a rare to have a white flowering ceanothus. In the spring, it's just, a, anybody who's watching this video, come see the garden in spring. It'll be amazing. And this is a cool and funky plant. So this plant, I actually just took cuttings, stoked them in water, and then they grew roots. Oh. So this is, this is actually a baccarus. This is um, like coyote bush in that same family. This is um, Baccarus salicifolia, or mule fat. So here's, here's the most of what the flower does, and then it puffs out into this puff. <laughs> and this plant tends to, tends to get scale, and the ants go for, to manage the scale. And this weird bug interaction where the ants are actually like milking the scale for for like a milky substance so it's like like they're milking cows oh, wow. but it's scale yeah <laughs> and this plant came from uh, the parent plant is on the corner 
And I never even knew this plant. I never knew it was a California native until I saw it here. I looked it up and then I figured it must have just reestablished itself from the creek. So here's some late flowers. This is one of our native asters. So the asters are really great for keeping um, bees and butterflies especially happy. And these two are making like a little fuzz f seed flower. So as these seeds spread in the wind, hopefully we'll get more next year. Another little red bud we planted. a lot of urban noise I'm sorry uh, there's a car wash right next door to us so that's what you're hearing now is the car wash part we have about five minutes left okay so this is just filling up with more aloes and uh, irises just trying to fill up more plants so we don't get as much weeds and then yeah now look back at how full it is so healthy looking and just so much more uh, healthy for people to see plants and flowers rather than just pavement and dry dirt. Exactly. Make quite a little oasis over here. I try. And once you're a gardener, it's like impossible to throw plants away. So <laughs> I figure there's, there's always a home for it somewhere. And even this ground cover, like once it gets going, like when we trim to clear this off the sidewalk, we can take those cuttings at the right time of year and just bury them and then they'll grow. Oh. Yeah. This is actually a patch of chard. So this is, this is an edible vegetable that grows on the outside and it just seeded itself and in spring, this will be a whole like four foot patch of chard. to look down the other side um, kind of the same thing just constantly filling in with flowers uh, the, the red is the blanket flower that is something that has always been here and just reseeds itself constantly like calendula so it's great it fills in where it wants to and do you want to see some native milkweed before we finish sure yeah all right Whoa. So this guy is the milkweed that the monarchs like. So it's going to seed all this fuzz. And if you ever get the chance, this is like the softest stuff in the world. It's like better than silk. Um, <laughs> so that little dark thing in the middle is the seed. And then the fluffiness will help the seed move. And then this is very typical with milkweeds that you'll get a lot of aphids. They get these orange aphids or oleander aphids. And even though it's a milkweed, oleander aphids only, <coughs> only go on certain plants. And milkweed is one of those plants. So yeah, there could be monarchs on here. And if it doesn't get monarchs, it brings in all the ladybugs will eat those aphids. So I tend to be a gardener of like, letting the bugs come in and let them take care of it themselves because there's always a natural predator. And this is what we call IPM or integrated pest management. And yeah. Do you have any questions for me? There's always a lag. Okay. <laughs> Nope, it doesn't look like it. So, All right. I want to thank you so much for joining us today. This has been a real treat. 
Thank it's you. It's nice to see somebody who's dedicated their life to taking care of the planet and nurturing plants that help all of us and finding a way to um, find a sense of peace in all of this. Um, I really appreciate that. And if you guys get a chance to come out to the Guadalupe Community Gardens, you should go ahead and do that. And uh, who should they talk to if they want to take a tour or come talk to somebody? Possibly maybe going through the city. So airplane, little airplane, not a big one. Um, you may want to contact the community garden uh, department at the, I believe it's through Parks and Rec Department through City of San Jose. And we did just have an open house. So usually annually there's an open house day where anybody can come, but that's just passed. Normally the community gardens are gated. So, uh, and there's waivers and all that. So it's possible, but probably just contact through the city first or look for our open house days. And then occasionally we will give talks here too. And that would be welcome for anybody to come. Well, thank you so much for um, letting us come and do this program today. If you have any questions for the Open Space Authority, please go to www.openspaceauthority.org and uh, we'll be glad to answer your questions and pass any on to Rebecca if you have them. Thank you so much for coming, everybody. We'll see you next time. And if you have general gardening questions, you can always uh, check out the Master Gardeners. We have a help desk service so we can answer gardening questions as well, too.